Joining me is Jackson Katz. He is the author of Leading Men, Presidential Campaigns and the Politics of Manhood. I have a copy here. We've been talking about a lot of different aspects, Jackson, of this presidential race. And one that we kind of have a little bit of an edge into, at least tangentially, is that gender gap that exists under which white men overwhelmingly support Mitt Romney and traditionally Republican candidates and uh, uh, women as well as non-white men, minorities, etc., tend to skew towards the Democratic candidate. Now, you've written extensively about this issue of masculinity in presidential elections. Let's start with this election specifically. How are you seeing the masculinity and the, the uh, 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 portrayal of masculinity of these two candidates affecting this race? Well, I think the most immediate and, and notable event was the first de debate in Denver when the discourse coming out of that debate was that Mitt Romney had basically bested Obama. Obama was passive. Obama was weak. And if you, if you listen to the right-wing um, talk radio and right-wing discourse prior to that debate, all of the, 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 the sort of energy on the right and the push that was trying to push uh, Romney to come out and aggressively attack Obama and, and, and Obama's performance played right into that narrative, which is that Obama's a weak leader, he's not strong, he apologizes for America, we need stronger, bolder leadership. So in a metaphorical sense, that debate was like a, literally like a boxing match, and, and our, the, the progressive champion, if you will, uh, Barack Obama, was revealed to be a, a weak, and the, and the Republican, the conservative, was revealed to be strong. And I think people talk about it as a theatrical performance, but what I do in my book, Leading Men, as well as in much of my other work, is to say that it's not just a theatrical performance, it's actually a contest of manhood, a manhood contest. And how that plays out in the gender gap is obviously that men are much more responsive to those kind of performances of masculine power, um, and, um, you know, and, and on and on from there. If we think about it in kind of a primal way, uh, looking back in, in human history, right? The idea of these masculine performances, as we call them, in great part was to scare off other men, but also to, to be attractive to women. And interestingly enough, in the political sense, it's not really appealing to women very much. This kind of pro-macho attitude from the right has actually turned off women. I'm wondering why that has been the case. Well, it's 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 a really good question. It's complicated because I think there's you know uh, um, there had there was some movement among women away from Obama uh, after the first debate as well. So so and and when we say women and we say men, I think we have to race this discussion because we're talk really talking about white men because for example, men of color are much. Um, less likely to be influenced by these kinds of cultural uh, messages than our um, than our than our white men, and that's true with white women and, and women of color as well. So it's it's important that we that we get specific that we're talking really about white voters more so than we are talking about voters of color. Um, but one thing, Dave, that I talk about in my um, in my book is that. For decades now, it's not just this, this election cycle, for decades now, the Republican Party has been able to successfully market themselves as the party not only that represents white people in a certain way or, or opposes civil rights or resists civil rights, but as the party that, 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 that um, is identified with strong men. It's the manly party. And, and they've been able to successfully at the same time feminize the Democratic Party in a way that, you know, to, to sending the message to voters that if you want to be identifying with a party that represents you in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, not just in, again, in a racialized way, but in a, in a sort of gender identity way, then the Republican Party is is your party. The Republican Party has successfully played identity politics with white masculinity for more than a generation. And I think the Democrats have only recently woken up to this part of the phenomenon. What's interesting is that with changing demographics, I was just looking uh, that by, by the 2016 election, the Republican uh, idea of kind of having a strong reliance on the white male voter is, is not really, it's unlikely to continue working because of changing demographics where close to 70% of the white vote is what the Republican candidate would need in 2016 in order to win election. So do you think that this is an idea, is this a paradigm that by the sheer nature of changing demographics is simply not going to work anymore? Or talk about that a little bit. Yes, I do think that uh, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, I discussed this in, uh, in Leading Men. There's no question that the shifting demographics are making the, the um, centrality of the white male vote less and less so with each, with each year and with, e with each 
election cycle. And the Republican Party and conservative movement in, more generally is going to have to figure out how to appeal to a more diverse, um, you know, uh, uh, electorate, or they're or they're just going to numerically be uh, be consigned to the you know ash heap of history. There's no question that the demographic shift is happening, um, but this election is still front and center. I think this election of Obama uh, versus Romney is masculinity is still front and center as a, as a part of the conversation. And one of the things that I talk about too is about how Mitt Romney has struggled to get the working class base of the Republican Party to believe that he's really authentically. Uh, their representative, and it, 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 even Newsweek magazine actually did a cover story about six weeks ago called Romney's Wimp Factor, which reprised Newsweek's cover story in 1988, which talked about George H.W. Bush's Wimp Factor. And I think some of this has to do with with the aristocracy and the and the and the and wealth and how wealth, even in the Republican Party, how wealth has been in a sense feminized, or at least you know um, there's a there's a there's a there's a cultural and a class and you know economic obviously gap between the working class and middle class base of the republican party and the and the leadership in this case i you know uh, embodied in mitt romney and so i think that's one of the reasons why mitt romney has tried to butch himself up to try to become more masculine to try to move to the right when you say when we say move to the right what we really mean is get more masculine yeah. so he, well let's talk about that specifically i mean with specific regard to this election i'm curious if if instead of thinking of the masculinity factor as a kind of plus minus who is perceived as more masculine let's talk a little little bit about something you do, which is that there's actually just different mi vi uh, visions of what masculinity and manhood are on the left, right? Because many people do, obviously millions of people believe that President Obama does represent a, a, a positive image of manhood and, and his own masculinity, but it's a very different type of masculinity. Talk about that a little bit. Yes, um, that's true. And, and in fact, I think you can be very strong and very powerful and be progressive and support gender equality and sexual orientation equality and gay marriage and, and, and a reduction in you know, military spending and be strong. So I don't think it's one or the other. And I do think, I do think that Obama, in his personal style, has modeled a kind of a less aggressive kind of masculinity, although critiques from his left, of course, are saying that, that this, this presentation in a public sense is, is covering for a, a continuation of George W. Bush's national security state and the drone killings and all kinds of other policies pursued by Obama are not at all representing a new masculinity. They're actually, uh, you know, content, continuing some of the old militarism. However, the, in a personal style, Obama is very much um, looking for points of agreement. He's collaboration, connection, uh, and, and that's traditionally been coded as a feminine style of leadership. And you see how he struggled with it. You see how he struggled with it when, he, when he's, he's running up against the Republican Party that's dominated by its right wing that doesn't want accommodation, that doesn't want to work in a bipartisan way. So th there's this tension between, yes, wanting to model a new kind of manhood, but how do you get things done politically in this environment with that style of leadership? The book is Leading Men, Presidential Campaigns, and the Politics of Manhood. We've been speaking with Jackson Katz. The book is a, a, a fascinating read, both pre- and post-election. Looking forward to other elections as well. Jackson Katz, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, David.